Hello, welcome to my channel Math with Nazia. In this channel, you will find a lot of tips and tricks across all the topics in math. If you are new to this channel, click on the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you can get a regular updates of all my videos. So in this video, we are going to cover the SOF that is the IMO International Math Olympiad. This is a sample paper of the syllabus 2022 and 2023 for class 3. This is an IMO sample paper. So here the total questions will be 35. So the pattern and marking scheme, this is for the final IMO exam. This would be the pattern. With logical reasoning skill, you will be getting 10 questions. Mathematical reasoning skill, you will be getting 10 questions. Everyday math, mathematics, you'll be getting 10 questions and achievers section, you'll be getting five questions. The first three topics will have one mark each and the last section that is which has five questions will have two marks for each question. So now let's see the syllabus covered for grade three. So the syllabus covered in section one would be pattern, analog and classification, alphabet test, coding, decoding, Ranking test, grouping of figures and figure matrix, mirror image, geometrical shapes, embedded figures, days and dates of and possible combinations. So section 2 which has mathematical reasoning will have num numerals, number names and number sense that is four digit numbers, computation operations, fractions, length, weight, capacity, temperature, time, money, geometry, data handling. So these are the parts covered in section 2 which is mathematical reasoning. In section 3, a uh, syllabus is as per section 2, the same section 2 whatever the syllabus is there, it will be in section 3 but it will have everyday math where you use math in your day to day life. And section 4 will be a hot question that is higher order thinking question. So this will have an, a higher order thinking question. So there will be 5 questions in the paper, each question will carry 2 marks and the uh, syllabus will be as per the section 2. The same chapters will be covered but it will be a higher order thinking questions. So now let's start with the logical and reasoning skills. So now we are going to cover the logical reasoning skill. So let's see the first question. Find the number of cubes in the given figure. We have a figure. The picture is given here and we have to find how many cubes will form this picture. The option given to us are 9, 10, 11 and 12. So let's see how many cubes are here. I think you all know what is a cube. These small, small things are called as a cube. This is a cube. So let's see how many cubes are here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have, we can see seven cubes here. Directly we can see there are seven cubes. But when the second line, there are hidden cubes. The, there is a hidden cube behind this. There is a hidden cube behind this. And there is a hidden cube in the first row below this. So there is a hidden cube here at the bottom. So that is eight. And there is a hidden cube here which is nine. And there is a two hidden cubes behind this. This, this, big, this cube, there are two cubes below this because there are two rows. So 10 and 11. So we have 11 cubes. So 11 cubes form. You could, should not only see the cubes which are visible, but you should think that the, to form a height, there are cubes below that. So we have to count those cubes also. Usually kids only see the cubes which is shown and you mark the answer, but think it little bit differently that there are cubes below that so that this height is formed. So you have to count all these cubes. So the answer for this question is 11. Now let's see the second question. Find the combination of numbers so that letters are arranged accordingly to form a meaningful English word. So there are some alphabets given E, A, C, S, L. But we have to see these combinations of alphabets will form one word in English which gives some meaning. So if you, if you can see by this and understand, you can form a word. If you don't understand, see what is given here the, as the options and you can think which would be the right answer. 
as you could see here 2 is given first which is a and then c is given sorry 3 is given so c a c and then 4 is given which is s a c s do we have any word like this a c s and then e and then l a c s e l we don't have any word like that so this is not the right answer now let's see the second option given to us we have the number 4 first so which is a s here and then we have number 3 which is c and we have number 2 which is a and we have number 5 which is l and number 1 which is e so this forms a meaningful word right scale so this is the right answer but we have to check the other two options given so let's check that also 4 is given here so which is s and 2 is given here which is a s a and 3 which is c l and e exactly so no this is not the correct one so if sometimes students may click this thinking that it is a scale but this is the correct answer now let's see here here also 4 is given which is s and c is 3 and 1 is e and l and then 2 is a so this is also not the correct spelling so our right answer is b now let's see the third question so third question is also a little bit different select the mirror image of the following given figure if the mirror is placed along mn so there is a figure a mirror here which is mn there is a mirror this way and we have this picture which is c 7 8 and a so you can see that whenever you see something in the mirror it looks different right whenever we see an ambulance we, we you i think you all know when you see an ambulance it will be written in reverse it will be written as it is flipped horizontally right so it is written like ambulance will be written as in the opposite way so that imagination we can start with this usually it flips horizontally it doesn't flip vertically they don't write the sentence vertically flipped they flip the sentence horizontally so as you could see here c has been flipped and a and seven has been flipped horizontally they have flipped it um vertically not horizontally so a is not the right answer so let's see the c part as you could see c here also has the seven written in the vertical flip so c is also not the right answer and let's see the d part as you could see the d option the seven is on the same side where it is in the main picture so no that is not because it has to flip it horizontally so the place changes seven goes to the a place and a comes to the seventh place so this is also not the right answer so this as you could see they have flipped it horizontally so 7 is in the place of A and A is in the place of 7 and 7 is flipped horizontally. It was not flipped vertically. Horizontal flip is like this. Vertical flip is like this. Right? So they have flipped it horizontally. Vertical flip is not right. You have to always flip it horizontally. So B is our right answer. So these are the type of questions which would be asked for logical reasoning skill. So I hope this is useful for you and if you found the video interesting, click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so that you get a regular updates of all my videos. And if you like the video, click on the like button. Now let's see the mathematical reasoning skill. So the first question for mathematical reasoning skills are, there are two possible routes that Akshita can take to reach her school from home. Which route is shorter and by how much? From her house, she has to go to school. She can either go to library and then go to school or the market and then go to school. So there are two routes. The route which is given in dark is the route P that is the above route. Akshita's house, library and school. So that is route P and the route Q is the bottom one which is Akshita's house market and then school so she has two possible routes and we have to find which route is shorter and by how much so you have to always split the question i have always told in my previous video also split the word problems we have to see which is shorter 
and by how much so first let's see what is the total of the root p and root q so how will you find the total of root p and root q so we have to add this so let's add this up so let's add the p root first which is 2 kilometers that is i'll write here kilometers i will write here the meters we have 2 kilometers and 48 meters so 48 meters i see usually students writing 48 and then put a zero so whenever it is in meters you will not put the zero at the right end you will put it in the left side so this is 048 so akshita's root is 2 kilometers 48 meters not 480 meters so we have to put a zero before then it is 3 kilometers 260 260 meters which is already given right so we can write it here which is 3 kilometers 260 meters now to find the total root length that is the root path so we have to add this now let's add this so when we add this what do we get 0 plus 8 is 8 6 plus 4 is 10 and the one carry over here so we have 3 and then we have 5 so we have 5 kilometers and 308 meters this is our path p right now let's find the path q so let's find the path q path q also let me write it here as there is no much place here for the working out we have 3 kilometers 264 meters and we have 2 kilometers 280 meters now let's add this up which is 4 and 8 plus 6 is also 4 and 5 and 5 here we have 5 kilometers and 544 meters so root p and this is root q okay so the root p is 5 kilometers 308 meters whereas the root q is 5 kilometers 544 meters so which is shorter right the path p is shorter so we can see path p has two options now they are asked by how much so whenever the word how much comes what we have to do correct we have to subtract so now we have to subtract path q and path p so which one we are going to write it in the first right we will write the bigger number above so we have 5 kilometers and 544 meters and then in path p we have 5 kilometers 308 meters so let's subtract this so when we subtract this 4 minus 8 we can't subtract so i'll borrow this becomes 3 and this becomes 14 i'm not writing here because it would be messy you can do it in your book work out so this becomes 14 14 minus 8 is 6 and we have 3 3 minus 0 is 3 and 5 minus 3 is 2 and 5 minus 5 is 0 so which we need not write so we have 236 meters so p is shorter by 236 meters so let's see do we have the option here yes we have the option c as p which is 236 meter so this is the right answer so whenever you get a question like this read it understand what is given split the question part by part then try to solve it so first we added up the root p we added up the root q and then we subtracted it to find which is shorter and by how much so i hope so this was interesting for you and easy to understand if you found this video interesting click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so that you get a regular updates of all my videos and if you liked my explanation click on the like button now let's see the fifth question the missing number in the box is so they have given some numbers we have to find what is missing here we have 1242 divided by 3 equals blank divided by 8 now let's see what is 1242 divided by 3 so i'm just going to divide it in a corner because there is very less space here for us to work out so with, when we divide these two, we have 
a 4 here which is 12. So now when we subtract these two, we get 0. I bring down this 4. 4 is not divisible by 3. 1, I can take 1. So 3 and then the reminder is 1. I bring down this 12. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. And here 12, so we get a 0 here. So here when we divide 1,242 1, divided by 3, we get it as 414. I will just write above it. So we don't have anything here. There is a blank here and divided by 8. So whenever we have like this, you can't find which number. You can't take all these four numbers and sit and divide with 8 and see which answer gets you to 414, which is time consuming and you won't have enough time to finish your test. So there is a simple trick. There is a small relation between a division and multiplication. So when we multiply these two, we get the answer here which number has to be divided with this. So for you to understand, I'll give you a small example. So let me write an example here so that you understand. Let me write it here so that you understand the concept. So if I have a 10 here, 10 equals blank number divided by 8. So which number divided by 8 will give me 10? It's 80, right? It is very easy, a very small number. So I think you all would have told me the answer is 80. But what is the trick? 10 times 8. 10 times 8 will also give us 80. So our answer is 80. So this trick of addition, multiplication and division, you can follow it here also. So I will multiply 414 with 8. So let us multiply 414 times 8. Let's see what do we get? 4 times 8 is, right, 4 times 8 is 32. 3 and 8 times 1 is 8 plus 3 which is 11. So I'll just put a 1 here and 8 times 4 is again 32. 32 plus 1 is 33. So we have got our answer which is 3312. So here is our answer which is B. So this would have been a time consuming if you could have divided 3213 with 8 and then 3312 with 8 and 4132 with 8, 1292 divided by 8. This you could have done four types of division and it would take a lot of time. So now isn't it easy to understand? Now let's see the sixth question for today which is the difference between 5038 and 512 is blank the product of 453 and 8. So the difference, so always split the question, the difference between these two numbers. So we have to subtract these two numbers and the product of these two numbers. So let's subtract these two numbers which is given here. Where shall I write that? Okay, let me write it here. 5038 minus 512. So what do we get here? We get it as 8 minus 2 is 6. 3 minus 1 is 2, 0 minus 5 which is not possible, so 10 minus 5 which is 5 and since this is borrowed, this would become 4. So we have got 4,526. So when I subtracted these two, what answer did I get? Five. Sorry, 4,526. Now we have to product this. What is the meaning of the word product? Right, product means it is multiplication. So let me multiply this side. So we have 453 multiplied by 8. So 8 times 3 is 24. 4 is written here. 2 is written above. 8 times 5 is 40. 40 plus 2 42. And then again 4. 8 times 4 is 32. 32 plus 4 36. So we have 3624. So this answer is 3624. This answer is 4526. So, what option will come here? Will it be greater than, less than, equal to or can't be determined? Right. This is greater than. So, the option A is right. So, these were all mathematical skills. Isn't it very easy? I hope this method was easy for you to understand. If you found this video interesting, click on the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you get a regular updates of all my videos. And if you like the video, do not forget to click on the like button.
Now, let's see the questions based on everyday mathematics. So, let's see the seventh question for today. Preeti is learning sign language in a special school. She learned 78 signs in the first two months. She learned 112 signs in the next three months. So, how many signs did she learn in all? So, why am I underlining all these words? These are the keywords for you to understand. So, you can mark it out or you can just see the keywords. That's why I'm just underlining the keywords. So, 78 signs she's learning in the first two months. And then she learned 112 signs in the next three months. But the question is, how many signs did she learn in all? So, when the word, the word in all comes, we have to write. We have to add it up. So, whenever the word in all, sum or total, whenever you find these three types of words, you have to add them. So, she first month, first two months, she found, uh, learned 78 and the next three months, she learned 112. So, now we have to add them up because the word in all is given. So, 8 plus 2 is 10 and then 8 plus 1, 9 and then 1. So, the answer is 190 signs she has learned in five months. So the option C is the right answer. So this is pretty easy question. Now let's see the eighth question. In Miku school, the lunch time is between 12.15 p.m. to 1.20 p.m. What is the duration of the lunch time? So, so you will also be having a lunch time in your school. Try to calculate it so that you do the time faster. So from 12.15 to 1.20. So, we have to find which is the right answer. Is it 1 hour 15 minutes or 1 hour 5 minutes or 1 hour 20 minutes or is it only 1 hour? So, let's see. This lunch time starts at 12.15. So, 12.15 to 1.15. I hope you all know that is 1 hour. So, it is 1 hour here. So, already there is a 1 hour. Then from 1.15 to 1.20 we have only 5 minutes. So, which is the right answer? B. 1 hour 5 minutes. Isn't it easy? These are the maths which we learned every day in our life. These all we use every day. What is the total amount spent? What is the time spent? How much time did you watch TV? And how much time did you spend studying? So all these are everyday mathematics which is applied here. Now let's see the achiever section. So this is the HOTS question. Means it is a higher end question. Now let's start solving that. So these questions carry two marks each. And these are a little tricky questions, but it is very easy once you start understanding your concepts. So what is given here? A triangle times triangle. So that should be some same number. Triangle times triangle equals a star. And triangle plus triangle plus triangle plus triangle equals star. So there are when you add four triangles also you get the star. Or when you multiply two triangles you get the star. So, when you see here, when you're going to multiply the same number, that means it should be a square number, right? So, I think you all know the square number. So, 2, two times 2, that is 4 is a square number. 3 times 3, so 9 is a square number. 4 times 4, so 16 is a square number. So, similarly, these are called as a square numbers. So, we have to take square numbers. What does star represent? So, they are asking what is star representing here? So, as you could see here, the options given to us are 4, 16, 25, 36. So let's see what are the square numbers here. 4 is also a square number. 16 is also a square number. 25 is also a square number. And 36 is also a square number. So here all the square numbers are given. So let's take if it is 4. Let's take an example if it is 4. If it is 4, I should put, we should take one diamond, one uh, triangle as 2. 2 times 2 will give us 4. But 2 plus 2 plus 2, will it give us 4? No, right? So that is not the right answer. Now let me take 16. So if the value of a star is 16, so which number we multiply? 4 times 4. So if I put a 4 here and 4 here, so 4 times 4 gives me 16. Now here when we add 4, 4 times 4, 4, 4, 4. So 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 16. So, 16 is our right answer. So, if you want to try with 25, let's try. 5 times 5, which is 25. So, 5, if I add 4 times, it doesn't give me 25. Same way with 6. 36, sorry. 
So 16 is our right answer. The value of a star is 16. Now let's see the 10th question. That is the last question for today which is very tricky and which is very interesting to solve. This is a very important question. These two are very important question. Now let's try to solve them. So here find the values of PQRS respectively. So they have given some values of PQRS and here there is a number given to us. So how are we going to do this? Let's try solving this. Let me write it here. So we have 2, 3 and we don't have anything here. There is a blank here and there is a blank here. And then there is a plus. We have a blank here. I'm not writing the alphabets there so that we can write the numbers over there. Then we have a 7, then we have an 8. Now we have to add these two so that we get 5, 9, 1, 0. So this is pretty easy if you understand this basic concept. Now as you know we have to add these two numbers. So 8 plus what will give us 0? Is it possible? 8 plus something will give us 0? Not possible, right? So we will take it as 10. 8 plus what will give us 10? So which is pretty easy which is 2. So 8 plus 2 will give us 10. So our S value is 2. So 8 plus 2 is 10, so 0 and there would be a carryover 1. So you should never forget this carryover 1 because usually we will go wrong without putting this 1. There will be a different number here. So now there is a carryover 1. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus what will give us 1? Not possible. So we will think about 11. 8 plus what will give us 11? Right, 8 plus 3 will give us 11. So I will put her 3 here. So 8 plus 3 is 11 and there is a carryover 1 again. So now this becomes 4. 4 plus what will give us 9? Right, 4 plus 5. And here we don't have any carryover. So 2 plus what will give us 5? Correct, 2 plus 3 will give us 5. So now as you could see we have got the values of PQRS. P is 3. So we have got the values. Let me write the values here. The value of P is 3. The value of Q we have got it as 5. The value of R is 3 and the value of S is 2. So these are the right answers but you have to find it in order. They have told PQRS respectively. Respectively means it has to be in the same order. So we need to find 3, 5, 3, 2. So where do we have the option here? This is the right answer. So 3, 5, 3, 2. This is our correct answer. Isn't it easy? Once you understand the concept, it is very easy to solve this. So I hope this was easy for you to understand. If you found this video interesting, click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so that you get a regular updates of all my videos. And if you like my video, do click on the like button. And thank you for watching till the end.